Good evening. This is the Elliott Wave update for the NASDAQ 100 for Sunday, January 2nd, 2022. Happy New Year to everyone. I hope everyone had a very enjoyable holiday weekend, uh, are safe, had a good time with family and friends, and are excited about trading as we walk into 2022. The start of the new year gives me an opportunity to go back and number one, review where the big picture is and how everything that has taken place within 2021, actually, how does it fit in and what's going on now? And I've now gone to, on the uh, NASDAQ future, and I've gone to my maximum chart, which actually just goes back to 2000. If I use the NDX, I can go back to 1986 or actually 1988, I believe. And so I can catch these, the cycle wave one and the cycle wave two within the uh, NASDAQ 100. On um, this particular chart, it doesn't go back that far, I, but I do get the cycle wave three and cycle wave four. So on that big picture, where we are is in a cycle fifth wave. And that cycle fifth wave has been in progress since October of 2002. In that month is when the NASDAQ bottom off of in, in a cycle wave four at 809.50. Now, I need you to bear in mind that that corrective phase on a cycle degree uh, took the market down and the, and the NASDAQ 100 lost 83% of its value from the high of cycle three to the low of cycle four was 83% of the NASDAQ 100's value. That was starting point. So now we are in a cycle fifth wave, which still continues to project that we're likely going to move above 16,800 to 17,000, probably even above 17,000 before all is said and done and we begin our next corrective phase. But if everything goes as we expect, on a cycle degree, if we're finishing the fifth wave on a super cycle degree level, it's either we're finishing super cycle degree one or super cycle wave one or super cycle wave three, as is in the S&P and the Dow. So either way, a large correction is coming, whether it's a cycle four or a cycle three, excuse me a cycle wave four or a cycle wave two. So, but either one, the expectation would be that the NASDAQ comes back and finds its support to complete the move at the terminus of the fourth wave of one lesser degree. So again, the correction's on a super cycle level. So it has to be on a cycle level that projects for the market to come back to 809.50. And from our current high, that's approximately about 90% of its value. Now, I'm not asking anybody to wrap yourself around that. I intend to go into a much deeper project of mine in terms of not just realizing what's lying in front of us, but how do we prepare? How do we prepare on several different levels, on our core positions, on our uh, quarterly positions? How do we prepare and how do we trade? And it's going to be based on developing and adhering to a positive mindset, the correct mindset to walk in as a day trader, to walk in and decide how do I need to prepare for a large enough correction, not giving any credence to what's gonna cause it, what's gonna happen, that there'll likely be a panic, there'll be a lot of uncertainty, et cetera, et cetera. That's gonna be the chaos. So what we need to develop is a mindset that's gonna allow us to go in and trade it and be prepared for it. Then there really are no surprises and should the bottom fall out, and the, everything begins to collapse, you're still going to be prepared. You're going to be in a position where you have now put your investments in places that are going to protect you and your family, et cetera. That's what I'm going to be talking about on my new project. And it's really going to be developing the correct mindset. All right. Now, just as to update the NASDAQ 100, because now we've got to put it into developing the mindset to trade day to day. 
right? So that's going to be important. And again, and when we're trading day to day, there just is no room to be listening to CNBC, to be listening to what pundits are going to tell you. That's the noise. Regardless of what direction this market goes in, I need everyone, including myself, to constantly be reminded that, number one, the market is always uh, perfectly priced. Number two, the market is always correct. Always. Fundamental. Leave it. It's correct. At that moment, at that particular time, buyer and seller met, and that's the price, and it's perfect. It's also correct whether we thought it should go up or whether we thought it should go down, whether we thought it should be above 17,000 or if you think it should be below 14,000. Makes no difference. That point is absolutely correct and perfect, perfectly priced at that moment. Now we can move forward from that and realize we need to be able to trade in areas where it's like, wow, this is kind of weird. And there's a lot of chaos going around, around you, in terms of what are we doing here? How are we gonna get here? What's the, what's the other side? What's CNBC saying? Gee, what is this guy saying? What's that guy saying? What's their position? What, what are they doing? It makes no difference. You need to be able to be prepared to make your own decisions. And the only way you're gonna be able to do that is to base it on price action happening right in front of you. And if you're making a longer term decision in terms of a position, then you need to base that on say an Elliott an Elliott analysis or just your own analysis of what you feel is coming down the pike. What I can tell you is that if you really look at things realistically, everything that's happening around us collectively, I think, will group together and form the perfect high, the perfect turning point in the market. So when it does happen, it's not going to make any difference. It'll be a collective gathering of all these factors, the pandemic, the economy, our bank failure, whatever is going to be in there, interest rates, the Federal Reserve, politics, who's in charge, et cetera. It's all going to come to a perfect point and a perfect turning point. And there will be no other reaction besides chaos because no one, people are not going to be prepared. How do you not get involved or enveloped by chaos? is to be prepared. So more on that, and there'll be a lot more on that, but here we are today. So, and I'm sorry, but I, this, this stuff is important. So we need to kind of wrap ourselves around that. If we're in this cycle wave five, within cycle wave five, there are going to be five waves of primary degree, primary one, two, three, and four. So we're within primary wave five of cycle wave five. So we're in, the, we're in these end stages here. Within that primary fifth wave, there are going to be five waves of intermediate degree. Uh, let me jump real quick down to the daily chart on this one. And within that, actually, I need to come up to the weekly so that I can see it. Uh, the five waves of intermediate degree. Here we have intermediate one, intermediate two, intermediate three is at that 16,067.50 high only intermediate wave three. It's a major change that I've made. And I went once again, and I was looking at how this all counted out. And the minor third wave of that intermediate three was the extended wave and is best counted as I have now laid it out. It was not easy, but it was the extended wave and it does show the power of the third. So it tends to fit better than declaring this intermediate five thus cycle five, primary five and cycle five, because obviously the market is not playing as if it is. Now, back down to that daily chart. So of this being intermediate wave three, what we have now completed is a possibility of being intermediate wave four. And if that's the case, then what we're really working on here as I've labeled as an X wave would be my uh, minute wave one, two, three, this three being here, and this is a minute four. Now I'm gonna come back down, I'm gonna to go to the four hour chart so we can get inside of that and look at that. If indeed this is the completion point for that intermediate wave four, then this would be one, two, three minute waves. This would be minute four, and we would still go up in a minute five up to a new high, 
maybe only up to that 16,845 area. And then that then would be just minor wave one of intermediate wave five. So under that view, there's still quite a bit of upside to do. Now, when we take a look at how everything's going and really what's happening within the NASDAQ, it would suggest very heavily that the current process of trade in terms of that is going after the big, big tech stocks will continue because that's what's gonna force it up in such strength because it's the stocks that are trading $2,500 to $3,000 or $3,500 to $4,000 and they're, or just over $1,000. There are quite a few. Even the stocks that have traded from 250 to 700 are now hanging out up here looking to go to 1,000. So there's still a lot of room for more euphoria, more irrational exuberance, whatever you wanna call it. But again, mindset's what's gonna be important so that we trade price action and we trade along with them and not against them and don't care why. Important. If we care why, then we're just paying attention to the chaos, paying attention to the pundits, trying to figure it out instead of putting your own plan of trading in with your mindset to make the money that you need to make to do what you need to do long-term basis, short-term basis, near-term basis, daily basis, and moving forward basis. Okay, so what I think we have is, if indeed this is in my new one, two, three, and this ends and, and holds itself here at the uh, four hour 50, and now I'm gonna come back down to the hourly, so because it's really the, the time frame that we use on a day-to-day -day basis. Friday's trade came down and just smacked right into the hourly 200, but it held and it rallied off of that point. Now today uh, we came in and we came down to 16,356 is where the market opened and then immediately shot up to 16,421 and then zipped right back down and now is sitting approximately 16,375 around in there going down to 69 up to about 80 so it's kind of fluctuating right in there now again european markets are closed tomorrow i think the asian markets are closed tomorrow as well so they're getting ready to open asia and that's not going to happen so what really takes place here it could just sit and, and do nothing until we all collectively meet tomorrow and go at it again <clears throat> as a broader u.s based market so Right now, if 1620 or 16,323 holds, then we could likely consider this as being a small minute four, and we're going to go up in minute five. Minute five would for sure be expected to break above 16,659 right there. But now I'm going to just start adding a little bit here. So if we needed to add our first marker for a fifth wave or for an up move, let's throw some. Fibonacci on there. And we're going to put extensions on for a wave five. And we already know that a wave five relates Fibonacci wise to a wave three. So that's what we're going to do right now. And I'm sorry that this is a longer uh, update, but we all deserve it. So here we have this one. And now our levels come in pretty cleanly. Now, now we got a little bit higher for where this first wave can uh, show up. We do have a 50% at 163637. That's Canada. But you see how breaking that high at 16,768 pretty much has to be a given. We need to break that high in order to finish uh, a fifth wave up to complete minor wave one or just to complete the five and then get ready for another little turn lower. Now, that's the bullish picture for tomorrow. And they're kind of lending towards that right now, the way that they came in and just really bought very quickly and now settling back and no one's gonna do anything until larger players come in. Uh, but here we have the downside picture would be that this indeed, we have an ABC, this is not the four, we have an ABC X and we're now doing a second ABC. So in that case, this would be A, this would be, and now we're working on the C wave, which is one, two, one, two, three, four, five. Now, if that's the case, 
what we're looking at, and again, I'm gonna go out to that four hour chart, uh, for what, what, what can we look at for as a C wave down? Well, C would be expected, number one, to kind of come down and break below this particular C wave. But we might only get down to like the four hour 200, 16,135, or possibly just break that 50 and get down to 16,250-ish, which was a support level that we had previously under a particular count. And if that happens and this all holds, then we can say that that fourth wave or the A wave is complete, excuse me, that this A wave, A, B, C, and then an A would be complete. Or we still can do one, two, three, and call this wave four and call it complete if it drops down to like 16,250-ish. So upside still on the boards for no matter which way we want to really view this market. The C wave, if we leave that as an X wave, and we get an A, a B, and a C. If this is the A, B, C in terms of on this level, so if I up that and call it a minute A, a minute B, and this is a minute C, then I'm looking for much lower because I'd be looking for it to break below that level. Um, so either way, we could get a larger move and then we're looking for like 15,311 to finish another ABC down. So X and then an ABC and then that uh, intermediate wave four. So again, this whole thing would be that, that if we're still involved in the intermediate fourth wave decline. If the intermediate fourth wave ended here, then, we're in, then we have our upside. So the market needs to make that decision and I believe that we'll get that tomorrow. We'll get a, a much clearer picture if we're gonna really drop below. So let's leave it like this. If we drop below this hourly 200, it's going to set in motion, I believe, where we're gonna have a heavier down day. If this all holds and we begin to rally and we pick up some steam to the upside and we start to break above there, then we know that we're likely heading up towards at least the new high, get, this and then this X wave, we put the four here and we got a one, two, three, four, five. If we produce five waves instead of the three as I'm showing, it's gonna be a very, it's gonna be a positive thing for the um, near term upside count. And new highs would definitely be in the works and major new highs. So here we have it for tomorrow. Our downside, we do have potential where the market could just give it up and drop all the way down to areas we haven't seen in a little bit of time. But back below 16,000, back below uh, this, we saw a week ago, we saw on the 20th, we would drop below uh, 15,514, complete this, and that would bring us down to 15,311. But what we did it pretty quickly here, there's no reason why I wouldn't, we couldn't expect it here. Again, Nothing is cast in stone. We're going to trade the price action. We're going to trade according to what the market does. That's our mindset. It's all a part of getting in the mindset. I will refuse to be married to any count. I'm giving you both sides of this picture. And I'm saying this is what will happen should it breaks here or if it breaks there. So we've got our levels. We've got everything. We should be more prepared to trade. This is where I'm going to leave it because I think I've gone on long enough. Uh, thank you for listening. I hope you're watching all the way or carrying this all the way to the end because I believe there's a lot of important information. Our next update will be Monday, January 3rd.